Hello everyone, before we begin, uh, I have some bad news. Originally, I had 23 minutes of usable audio recorded for this video, but because I was working on the BlackRock video at the same time, I accidentally saved part 1 of the BlackRock video on top of part 1 of this video. And before you say there was a way I could have recovered that audio, trust me, I watched so many YouTube videos on the topic, asked ChatGPT, and asked a bunch of people already. So I was left with two options, cry or or get back to work. And I picked the latter. Anyways, let's get on with the video. So I want you guys to know that Armored Skeptic is one of my main inspirations for doing YouTube. He started off in the Skeptic community, and somewhat dipped his toes into the anti-SJW community, but I also really enjoy knowing better's content. He's one of the very few leftists I actually watch. I highly recommend you check out his video on neo-slavery and Indian removal. Now I am a bigger fan of Armored Skeptic, I've basically enjoyed every single one of his videos up to this point, but when I saw his coverage of knowing better's video, in defense of Christopher for Columbus, it was the first time that he genuinely made me angry. And I'm certainly not the only one who didn't like this video. This video has been absolutely ratioed. And this is one of Knowing Better's worst videos, so there was no reason for Armored Skeptic to do such a horrible job at covering it. But much like Vouch, I have lollygagged for long enough. Let's dive into this video. Before we get started, this Knowing Better video that I'm responding to has been unlisted and was replaced with a follow-up video that better explains the history of Columbus. It might seem petty to reply to a five-year-old video that's currently unlisted, but the fact that I could still find this so easily is a huge problem. Well, Armored Skeptic, it doesn't seem petty. It just is petty. And what do you mean by easy to find? You can only find it through a link or through a playlist. To me, easily finding something on YouTube would be to look it up and it's, um, the top result. He should have deleted this video a long time ago, and I think that the only reason he hasn't is because he's too proud to give up the over 3 million views that it accumulated. Well, I've unlisted videos before, and the reason why I don't fully delete them is so that people can see the mistakes I have made. I even have a whole playlist for them on my channel. So to assume the only reason why he hasn't deleted it is because he's proud of the amount of views it has seems just a bit uncharitable. And trust me, Armored Skeptic is going to get way more uncharitable throughout this video. But what's worse is that his follow-up video doesn't even address the biggest problems with this unlisted video, and at least once, he straight up lies. I want to start this off by saying we should get rid of Columbus Day. We should start celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day. That has always been my position. That's the follow-up video, but in the original video, he said, I personally don't think that we should have a day to celebrate him, but conversely, I I also disagree with just renaming it Indigenous Peoples Day because what is it really? It's just anti-Columbus Day. Think about it. What do people do on Indigenous Peoples Day? They hate Columbus, burn him in effigy, and hold mock trials of him. Don't just name swap it and make it hate on Columbus Day. Wow, that does sound like a lie. But let's play his clip for a little bit longer, shall we? If you want to have a day where we celebrate native history and native cultures, then let's do that. Don't just name swap it and make it hate on Columbus Day. We don't have a day where we hate on objectively more evil people like Hitler or Stalin. It's weird. By the way, I did not originally get that clip from Knowing Better's video. I actually got that from near the end of Armored Skeptic's own video. Now, would I say that Armored Skeptic lied here? Uh, no, he probably just made a mistake while editing. I've made those myself plenty of times. But it's clear to me that Knowing Better did not contradict himself or lie. He believes that we should celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day, but it shouldn't just be about hating on Christopher Columbus. Because, well, there are objectively worse people in history and we don't have holidays just to hate on those guys. We don't have an anti-Stalin day or anything like that, at least as far as I'm aware. But Mr. Skeptic, now that I made you aware of this mistake, I really hope you correct it, at the very least in the pinned comment. Because if you're watching this video and you don't, then it won't be a mistake. It will be a lie. And this clear contradiction, along with a few other statements that he made in his follow-up video, make it pretty f***. 
and clear that he simply doesn't want to own up to the mistakes that he made in his original upload. Wrong. Well, that was not a clear contradiction, as I just shown, but in his follow-up, he explained why he unlisted that video. It's because he doesn't want his content to be about making response videos to people. I don't really want to rework the old Columbus video, not because it's incredibly inaccurate or I'm embarrassed by it, but because that's just not what my channel is about anymore. As I've already said, this video is not a response to the response, partially because my original video is itself a response, and that's just too many layers for me. The point is, none of these videos were popular when they first came out. I released Columbus in December 2017, which was after Columbus Day that year. It saw some initial success on Reddit, but that was it. It wasn't until I shifted away from nitpicky responses and towards a more narrative style that the channel really took off. And even then, it was mostly old videos like 4K TVs and wannabe states. I agree. I've long since abandoned that approach to making videos. Now maybe he does believe he made mistakes in those videos, and he just doesn't want to own up to them. But honestly, that's just speculation at best. It's more likely that he took down the video for the reason that he gave. I want to show what the human brain looks like on indoctrination. Knowing Better's video is a really good example of how your ego can block you from accepting reality, protecting you from uncomfortable truth, from which you are currently benefiting. Huh, what a coincidence. I feel the same way about your video. Columbus couldn't have discovered that the Earth was round because in his time, it was already common knowledge. The way Adam phrases this makes it seem like Columbus thought he was the first person to conclude that the world is round. He didn't, nor did he ever claim to. This is what Columbus was aiming for, Sepangu, which is supposed to be Japan. Obviously, this isn't where Japan really is, but that is where everyone thought it was. It wasn't Columbus's calculation of the distance that was off. It was any educated person's positioning of Japan. Columbus was also hoping that there would be uncharted islands off of the east coast of Japan. So when he landed here, that's what he thought he found. Globes weren't exactly common back then. In fact, this is the oldest surviving globe in the world made in 1493, completely separate from Columbus. I don't want to focus on this too much because this is not what the video is about. Humans have known since at least the Greco-Roman period that the earth was a globe. But as far as we know, Columbus was the first person in modern history to demonstrate that that's true. I mean, you're not wrong, Armored Skeptic, but neither is knowing better. You're not debunking the point he made, you're basically making the exact same point. Also, Christopher Columbus was not the first man to demonstrate that the Earth was round. Plenty of people have done that beforehand using shadows, which is something I know you already knew. Christopher Columbus just proved it was round without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, but flat earther still exist for some reason. Now I know some of you might be thinking to yourselves, wow, that seemed like such a nothing point from Armored Skeptic. Oh, trust me, it's gonna get so, so much worse. Columbus landed on the island of Hispaniola, which is 7,000 miles away from Japan. That's where they got that number. So I suppose he got kind of lucky that he accidentally discovered some new land. <laughs> That's an uncomfortable way of putting it. Lucky for whom? Um, Christopher Columbus, the guy he was talking about? He just said Christopher Columbus got lucky, and Armored Skeptic is, for some reason, confused as to whom he's talking about? Lucky in what way, exactly? I guess lucky in the way that he found a new continent, which put his name in the history books. Hypothetically speaking, if the North and South America continents weren't there, he would have wasted time and resources, which would have destroyed his reputation, or worse, he could have died at sea from thirst, hunger, or his men mutinying against him and executing him. So yeah, I would say he got pretty lucky. Was it lucky for the natives? <laughs> Definitely not. But it was still lucky for him at the end of the day. Like Armored Skeptic, do you know how weird it would be if you won the lottery and you said, ha oh, ha, it was really lucky of me to win the lottery. And I just came up to you and said, lucky for who exactly? All the people who didn't win the lottery at all? Lucky for the Spanish monarchy who made bank off of the discovery through the and pillaging of the peoples in the land? Oh yeah, I guess those guys also got lucky for how much money they made. Granted, knowing better didn't bring up how lucky those guys got, but I'm glad you did. Thanks, Armored Skeptic.
What was your point exactly? Is, th is that what you mean by lucky? Oh God, that made me want to throw up. Oh, now I get what your point is. Your point is that when some people get lucky and win the lottery, there are a lot of unlucky people who wasted a lot of money trying to win. Oh, golly gee willikers, Armored Skeptic. Thanks for telling the class that when there are winners, there are also losers, which is something everyone in the world already knew, but for some reason it makes you want to throw up. But in all seriousness, knowing better was just saying that it was lucky for Christopher Columbus, not everyone in the world. Armored Skeptic, you're allowed to say that bad people get lucky sometimes. It's not a bad thing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I mean by indoctrination. At no point during this video nor his follow-up video is Knowing Better even willing to entertain the idea that it was a bad thing that Europeans came over to America. You got all that from him saying that one guy got lucky? <laughs> Okay, but in all seriousness, even if your straw man was correct, for the world's economy as a whole, the discovery of America was a good thing. Yeah, it was absolutely a bad thing for the natives, but not for the rest of the world. Technology was booming around this time. If North and South America never existed, our technology would be 50 to 150 years less advanced. He didn't discover America, and he didn't prove the Earth was round. This is something that you've heard everywhere, and it's probably already down in the comments. Whenever Adam says America, he's specifically referring to the United States, which is weird. No, that's not what Adam's saying at all. Actually, Armored Skeptic, it's exactly what Adam said. Yes, Adam did indeed say other things about Christopher Columbus, but he still said he never stepped foot in America. Knowing Better never made the claim that this was Adam's only point, and you acting like he did is just weird. To be fair, I've made this mistake in my Woman King video. I said that Christopher Columbus never stepped foot on the continent of America, when in reality, he did step foot on the continent during his fourth expedition. He just never stepped foot in what eventually would become the United States of America. I guess I accidentally got the continents and the country mixed up. I personally have a problem with people who say that the Vikings discovered America first. What Adam was saying is that Columbus could not have discovered America because there were were already people living there. <sighs> Oh my god, I am so sick of this argument. No one who has ever made the claim that Christopher Columbus or the Vikings discovered America don't believe that there were already people living here. Everyone knows that there were already people living here. No one has ever denied it. Just because people were living here already doesn't mean it wasn't a discovery for Europe. I'm tired of people acting like saying, Oh, there were already people living here is an argument. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock, I already knew that. And the fact that you think I didn't know that just proves how ignorant you are. Like, do you think I'm gonna react like this? Oh my god! I didn't know that! Oh, thank you for telling me! For the longest time, I thought no humans lived in North and South America until the Europeans showed up! In fact, when Adam literally says that in his video, instead of addressing that point, knowing better instead throws up a nitpick about the population number being wrong. If you don't count the quarter million Taino people that live there already. Uh, occupied? Someone lives here? Who gives a f if Adam is wrong about the population number. The point he's making is that people were already there. Um, Mr. Skeptic, I care about the population being wrong, and so do a lot of other people. Like if I said that, um, 600 million people died in the holiday cost, you pointing out that the number is wrong does not make you a holiday cost denier. I decided to recheck out Knowing Better's video when I found out that Armored Skeptic really played clips out of order. Like, a lot. He's not covering Knowing Better's video one point after another. Instead, he's just responding to clips from all over the video. I'm not saying he's taking the guy out of context, but this does look really sus. And it probably means that he's seen Knowing Better's video multiple times over, so he has even less of an excuse for getting so many things wrong about it. Now, Adam not only got the population number wrong, he really got the population number wrong. Most sources around that time say that there were 2,000 to 5,000 Taino people left, not 200. I'm guessing that Adam took
took the lower 2000 number, and while his team was working on the script, they accidentally removed one of the zeros. Stuff like this happens sometimes, it's kind of like that time Adam said that the Empire State Building was 10 times taller than it really was. That being said, Adam still used a source that said there were only 200 Taino people left, but that same source also says that there wasn't a quarter of a million Taino people, but 1.1 million! Yeah, so Adam picked the number that was probably a typo, but ignored the number that was absolutely ridiculous. There's no way the Taino people had the infrastructure to handle a population like that, and there's absolutely no way that 40 Europeans wiped out over a million Native Americans. Mr. Skeptic, I hate to break it to you, but this is a lot more than just a nitpick. I do not care if the point was that there were already people living there, the fact that he got the numbers this wrong is a problem. By continuously refusing to address this, knowing better is essentially refusing to acknowledge the aboriginal population as equal to the Europeans and is dehumanizing them. Whoa! Whoa! Where did that come from? Pointing out that someone got the population numbers wrong is not dehumanizing anyone! Like in the previous example I gave, Armored Skeptic, if you pointed out that 600 million people didn't die in the holiday cost, I would not claim that you were dehumanizing anyone! So yeah, Armored Skeptic's video was only kind of bad so far, but now we're getting into the reason why I just had to make a response to it. This is why he thinks it's a good thing that Columbus discovered land because he doesn't give a f about how the natives feel about it. Aboriginals aren't even real people to him. Oh shut the fuck up you moralizing piece of shit. Bro you are being so cartoonishly uncharitable. You know what? Forget the skeptic or the anti-SJW community. I think you should join the art CC or something. And I know it's harsh for me to say that about knowing better, but if you pay attention to the way that he talks about natives in this video, you'll start to understand what I'm getting at here. All right armored skeptic, I'll I'll continue to watch your video to see if you can actually prove your claim. Spoiler alert, he doesn't. Columbus's discovery, on the other hand, opened up both halves of the world to each other and changed world history forever. Open up both sides of the world to each other? What the f are you talking about? The only reason that the aboriginal population was interested in trading with the Europeans at all is because they were under the false premise that it was going to be fair and equal trade. Okay, so Christopher Columbus still opened up both sides of the world to each other. Just because one side is being treated very, very unfairly doesn't mean that both sides of the world didn't open up to one another. In fact, for all of recorded history before both sides of the world opened up to each other, the Europeans weren't doing doing terrible things to the natives, because both halves of the world were closed off from one another. I didn't think I had to explain that to a grown man, but apparently I did. Like what do you think he means by both halves of the world opening up to one another? Personally, I thought he meant that travel between both of them was now possible. The native population didn't get excited about being able to travel to Europe. Um, I guess they didn't, but this doesn't debunk anything knowing better said. And the vast, vast majority of aboriginals that traveled to Europe did so against their will. Well, I do agree that's absolutely terrible, but um, this doesn't debunk anything Knowing Better has said. This is what I mean that he frames the discovery of America as a universally good thing that was beneficial to everyone involved. Knowing Better neither said nor implied that it was beneficial to everyone involved. You just came to that conclusion because he said, both halves of the world opened up to one another. It's like almost nothing he says in this video is correct. Yeah, that's what I think about your video. So now that we've cleared all that up, kind of, and we're in America, we need to discuss how primitive or not primitive the Native Americans were. Oh god, this is when his seams really start to come undone. Ah, <sighs> yeah, that's how I feel about your video, Armored Skeptic. People on both sides tend to lump all Native Americans in together. They're two huge continents spanning thousands of miles. What's true for one tribe isn't necessarily true for another. If one tribe mapped all the stars and created an almanac, that doesn't mean they all did. If one tribe didn't use the wheel, that doesn't mean they all didn't. Mm, mm, all right. But they weren't just tribes. Even with just a cursory knowledge of native history, you'd understand the natives were broken up into nations. A tribe is just what you would call an individual group. The Americas weren't just covered with hundreds of tribes that had no connection to each other. There were specific language groups. No, no, armored skeptic, that's... that's... 
Oh my god, Armored Skeptic actually got something right! Too bad it doesn't debunk anything Knowing Better said. And I'm pretty sure Knowing Better knew this, but it would have been good for him to bring it up. Some of them did invent a wheel. They just didn't use them for hauling because they hadn't domesticated draft animals yet. I would have been fine with that statement until he said the word yet. This implies that given enough time, they would have eventually when... No, they wouldn't have. Ever. Well, Lordy. I can't see real good. Is that Bill Shakespeare over there? There is no way in hell that you could possibly know that the aboriginals of the Americas would never have domesticated the buffalo. Ah. Okay, I will be going into more detail about this later on in the video, but it's clear that Armored Skeptic doesn't know the difference between tameable, trainable, and domesticatable. They had domesticated animals, even pack animals such as llamas and emus. Okay, so later on in Armored Skeptic's very own video, he plays a clip from Knowing Better that shows he does know that the natives domesticated the llama. But for some reason, he's acting like he didn't know that. And as for emus, um, Armored Skeptic, emus are from Australia. They're not native to North and South America. Where did you get that from? And as far as I'm aware, the emu has never been domesticated, even by the most broadest definition of the term. Lastly, why are you bringing up that they domesticated domesticated other animals aside from the buffalo? Do you actually think that because a culture can domesticate one animal that they can domesticate any animal or something? And it was only a matter of time before they domesticated something larger. Holy shit, you actually do believe that! Armored Skeptic, the size of the animal has very little to do with whether it's domesticatable or not. Like, just because you can domesticate a cow doesn't mean you can domesticate a rhino. Now, technically, with enough time and selective breed, you can domesticate, well, pretty much any animal. But with the amount of time it would take to selectively breed the buffalo, well, I'm pretty sure the natives would have made it to the moon before they fully domesticated it. Not because they're intellectually inferior or anything like that, but because they had a really difficult spawn point. Please do not devolve into using video game logic for something like this. Bro, are you serious? Almost every single YouTuber does this. It just makes the video more entertaining by connecting it to something that a lot of people People love. Like, if you actually have a problem with this, I don't know if I should call you an SJW, Karen, or Boomer. Knowing better is supposed to be a professional teacher, and he talks about these issues like he's a third grader writing a book report. Okay, Karen, calm down. There are no draft animals or work or pack animals in the Americas. There are no horses, donkeys, or camels. Those are not the only animals in the universe that can do those things. Oh my god, it's one of those you didn't mention X, therefore by arguments. Armored Skeptic, he knows that. In fact, he brings up more animals like that later on in the video, so I don't know what you're complaining about. Knowing better never said, nor implied, those were the only animals that could do that. You just want him to make his video five hours long so he can mention everything about, well, everything. The draft animals that we used were not automatically conceived into nature exactly the way that we use them on farms today. Livestock's features are altered through selective breeding to create optimal work animals with ideal features. Yeah, I'm pretty sure knowing better already knew that. It's uh, common knowledge. But the thing is, things like cows, pigs, chickens, sheep, horses, and a lot of other animals were already pretty close to how we wanted them to be. So that's why people selectively bred them. Like, do you actually think people selectively bred the pig over the hippo because they liked pigs more or something? The ancestor to what would later become the cow was a lot more demanding domesticatable than the buffalo. There's a reason why the Africans didn't domesticate the zebra. They absolutely tried, and if they succeeded, the Europeans wouldn't have messed with them nearly as much. Besides, your point is irrelevant. The indigenous North Americans could have chosen to never domesticate anything larger, and that would not have invalidated their culture. They still deserve to exist, and they still deserve to be left alone. Okay, the Native Americans did not choose to domesticate 
domesticate anything larger, they just couldn't. If they actually made the conscious choice not to domesticate anything larger, then holy shit, they're dumb. But even if they did make such a stupid decision, I agree that it wouldn't have invalidated their culture, and they do indeed have the right to exist. But do you know who would be even cooler than bringing this up, Armored Skeptic? Actually talking about things in Knowing Better's video! Knowing Better just brings up that the Native Americans did not have the same advantages as the Europeans did, and Armored Skeptic just says to him, well, they still have the right to exist. Um, uh, yeah, cool. He never said nor implied they didn't. Domesticating beasts of burden is not a requirement to being a sovereign people. This is such a weird line of logic. And it's a line of logic that knowing better doesn't have. Sure, domesticating beasts of burden is not a requirement to becoming a sovereign people, but it's a huge advantage. And because of that, they hit somewhat of a cap on their civilization tech tree. All right, the video game references are cute and everything, but he's using using them as a form of dishonesty. What Knowing Better is doing here is implying that it is necessary for a human civilization to evolve and develop a specific way. What? No! Knowing Better knows a lot about history, so he knows more than most people that almost every culture advances in different ways. Even if your straw man was correct that he truly believes that a culture needs easily domesticatable animals to exist, that does not mean every single culture is going to advance in the exact same specific way. It's like you're making a straw man on top of a straw man. And also, he's not even implying that you need easily domesticatable animals to advance. Pay attention to what he said. He said somewhat of a cap on their tech tree, which is absolutely true. Easily domesticatable animals are a huge advantage. Again, he's not even entertaining the idea that it's okay for a civilization not to develop work animals. No, it's not okay for them to do that. Easily domesticatable animals would make their lives so much easier. The reason why they didn't do it was because they couldn't. He's implying that aboriginals of the Americas were developmentally stunted, and because of that, we should see them as inferior. Bro, shut up. He is not saying nor implying that. A lot of these talking points come from the book Guns, Germs, and Steel, which is a book I don't want you to read because I'm afraid you'll think it's a sequel to Mein Kampf. He's explaining very well, I might add, as to why the natives weren't as advanced as the Europeans. You, on the other hand, are saying, oh, they just chose not to domesticate animals. If anyone's implying they're mentally stunted, it's you. He's saying they couldn't. You're saying they were too stupid to do so. He's implying that they should not be seen as equal humans when he said that the natives were primitive. We need to discuss how primitive or not primitive the Native Americans were. He wasn't just using using that as a colloquial term. He meant that aboriginals are not as good as Europeans. Um, no, he was using the colloquial term. You just took such an uncharitable interpretation with what he said that you literally translated into the opposite of what he meant. Real life is just like some sort of a role-playing game, and because Europeans had filled out more of their tech tree, that Europeans were somehow winning the game. Oh, well, I completely disagree with that. They weren't winning the game. They won the game. They had so much more technology that it wasn't a war they had with the natives. It was a one-sided genocide. So more or less, he's implying that it was inevitable for the aboriginals to get overtaken by Europeans. Um, yes, that's because it was. And that they deserved to be conquered. Oh my god, Armored Skeptic is implying that the Aztecs didn't deserve to get conquered. He wished they were still around so that they could rip out the still beating hearts of children. You see how annoying that is? I can't believe that I actually have to say this to a grown-ass adult, but life is not a video game. Civilizations are not required to develop a specific way in order to be considered valid, and a relatively advanced civilization does not have the duty nor the right to conquer a less advanced civilization. Okay, first of all, none of that had anything to do with anything Knowing Better said. But as for what you said at the end, 
and unfortunately, they did have the right. Back then in the Age of Empires, might always made right. You can say they didn't have the right, but they sure thought they did. And they had the power to decide what was right. If a guy breaks into your house with a gun, you can tell him he doesn't have the right to take your stuff. But he has the gun. Oh, but Char, I'm a skeptic just meant they didn't have the right in a moral sense. Oh wow, that's even dumber because you can say that about literally any genocide. Oh, I can't wait until Armor Skeptic's next video where he tells us that water is wet. Throughout his entire video, this is the only argument that Knowing Better makes to support his claim that it was a good thing that Columbus discovered new land. Um, no, those are the arguments he made as to why the natives weren't as advanced. You, sir, are an imbecile. You can't really have large cities without animals. Ho <laughs> You can't really have large cities without animals. Animals. There were dozens of enormous cities here before Columbus landed. Some so incredible that they could be considered technological marvels. No, no, Armored Skeptic, that's... That's, oh my god, Armored Skeptic actually got something right, and it had something to do with what Knowing Better said! Oh, I knew he could do it! I'm joking, of course, the people who helped build those cities had llamas. And honestly, I'm not even remotely surprised that the American education system does not include information like this in their curriculum, because they don't even want you to understand how aboriginals lived before Europeans got here. <sighs> What? No, the American education system does have this in their curriculum. At least mine did. It's so cute when someone from a primitive nation who hasn't even made it to the moon yet thinks they're smarter than Americans. And just look at the things that they've discovered recently. In 2018, scientists using LIDAR discovered a massive lost Mayan city that at its most conservative estimate would have been home to 10 million people. Likely many more than that. Wow, Armored Skeptic, that's a great point, but I have one question. How could Knowing Better have possibly known this? His video came out December 2017. According to yourself, this information wasn't discovered until 2018. This is why it's petty to respond to a video that's over five years old, because you have the benefit of hindsight, and he doesn't. With the exception of llamas and guinea pigs in Peru, they didn't have any domesticated animals. Wrong. They domesticated wolves and dogs, foxes, reindeer, falcons, and even the occasional black bear. <sighs> okay, now I'm gonna get into why Armored Skeptic doesn't understand the difference between domesticatable, trainable, and tameable. Just imagine calling the deer and the black bear domesticatable animals. Now, just like with all terms humans come up with, there is some gray area for what is and is not a domesticatable animal. Scientists can't exactly cut open a dog and say, Oh, look, there's the domesticatable gene. So with a broad enough definition, you could call the wolf, the fox, and the falcon domesticatable animals. But not all domesticatable animals are created equal. Neither the wolf, nor the fox, or the falcon can pull as much as a horse can. And they can't feed as many people as a pig can. And the European dog is a more loyal companion and a better hunting animal than any of those three. There were no cows, pigs, or chickens to share diseases with, so Native Americans were incredibly vulnerable and susceptible to disease. If anything, you're making an argument that Europeans should have just left the natives alone. Well, they definitely didn't know that at first, and if they did, that would have been even more of a reason for them to get there even faster. Oh boy, we don't even have to kill most of them! Our diseases will do that for us! Back then, people didn't have the same moral compass we have today. People were assholes back then. From your modern day perspective, you can say it was a reason for them to leave the natives alone. But for them, if they had that knowledge, it would be more of a reason for them to go there. But your armored skeptic was making a moral argument. <laughs> yeah, knowing better was making a point about why the natives lost. Native Americans were incredibly vulnerable and susceptible to disease. Again, not because of any genetic inferiority, but because of their difficult starting location. <laughs> oh my god, you have to stop that. Again, you're just implying that the aboriginals should have to want to be part of the world stage. That they should have to 
to want to compete on the same level as Europeans, that the Aboriginals should have to want to be technologically equal to the rest of the world. This is bigoted. You're being bigoted. Oh yeah, they should have to do all of that if they didn't want to get wiped out. But the thing is, they can't. This is not bigotry, this is simple logic. And even then, that's assuming if you were right about what he said. But all he said was that because the Europeans lived in close proximity to a lot of animals for so long, they built up an immunity to cowpox, swine flu, and a lot of other things. But because the natives didn't do that, they didn't have any of their own plagues to infect the Europeans with. He's not saying they should have to want to do anything! Because he's assuming the premise that colonialization is necessarily a good thing. That the Eurocentric mindset deserves to conquer the world. This is the most disgusting sh**. You're being a bully. The only one being a bully here is you. You're constantly twisting what he says and putting words into his mouth to make a point. I take back what I said about how Armored Skeptic should join the RCC, because at this point I think he's more like Prismate Luke. Since Europeans and Asians had been living in close proximity with animals for centuries, they had built up somewhat of an immunity to animal diseases, like cowpox, chickenpox, and the various swine and avian flus. So on Columbus's second voyage, when smallpox was introduced to the New World, it burned through the entire continent, killing 90% of the Native American population before they had even heard of a European. This was inevitable and unavoidable. The smallpox hypothesis was merely one of many different theories levied to explain why the native population was so small when later groups of Europeans arrived on the continent. And most historians don't really take that hypothesis seriously today. Citation fucking needed. This is what I, along with everyone else I know, believes. It makes perfect logical sense. What, did you think that just 50 Europeans wiped out 90% of the native population? Yeah, they had better technology, but they weren't exactly nuking them. Like, do you think that just 90% of the native population was abducted by aliens? Even if you're right, all you're really doing is demonstrating why Europeans never should have come to the Americas in the first place. Okay, so even if the Europeans were in incredibly nice people and wanted to get along with the natives, they still shouldn't have come because their diseases would have wiped them out regardless. Well everyone, I guess we should stop all scientific advancement because we could make something that kills a lot of people. 1600, 90% of the native population had died, so when the first North American colonists showed up in 1607 and 1620, they found most of the land to be pretty much uninhabited. Pre-Columbian population numbers for North America vary widely, from 50 to 100 million. But everyone pretty much agrees on that 90% disease mortality number, so we're talking about 5 to 10 million people in 1600 spread across the entire continent. Before you go thinking that that's exceptionally bad, remember that 150 years before Columbus, Europe lost 50 to 60% of its population to the Black Plague. These epidemics just kind of happened. This was inevitable and unavoidable. What he's trying to argue here is that Columbus couldn't be that bad of a guy because he personally didn't kill 90% of the native population. And that is a garbage argument. He's pretending that it was simply disease, which was out of his hands. He couldn't control that. But the truth is that Columbus and the men under his employ were directly responsible for murdering and killing through capital punishment, but the unfortunate fact that we have to deal with here is that the native population declined rapidly after it was discovered by Columbus. Wow, Armored Skeptic, you did such a good job at debunking knowing better. Even though all you said was, oh, Columbus may not have killed 90% of the native population, but he still did a lot of bad things. Which doesn't debunk anything knowing better said. I've seen Armored Skeptic do this before. He tried tries to make it sound like he's debunking something someone said, but he is really just agreeing with them, but making it sound
sound like a disagreement. Like Armored Skeptic, you're not wrong, but neither is knowing better. Smallpox was one guess that has never been demonstrated to be true. So it's way more likely that the population declined because Columbus began a precedence of slaughtering natives, separating them from their culture and their land, and forced them to live in conditions they were not used to. Oh my god, I was joking before. He really does think 50 men killed 90% of the population. Spin that however you want, but the native population declined directly because of the acts of Columbus and his regime. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that Knowing Better agrees with you. This debunks none of what he said. Also, if it wasn't for Christopher Columbus introducing those new diseases to the new world, it would have been some other European. Now we're getting into the slavery and genocide portion of the video. Uh, you're gonna want to make sure you're sitting down for this part. Let's start with this one about them making good servants. What do you notice about this quote? How about the fact that it's neither the beginning nor the end of the sentence? There's clearly more to it. So we're gonna have to look it up. And here it is. It appears to me that the people are ingenious and would be good servants, and I am of the opinion that they would very readily become Christians, as they appear to have no religion. They very quickly learn such words as are spoken to them. In full context, the word servant could mean slave, or servant of God, or subject of the crown. When they just cut out the ingenious good servant part, it only means slave. They remove any context and any doubt. Okay, but look at the context of what he means by that. He's not saying, hey, maybe we can convince them of their own free will to choose to work for the crown. He's saying we can make them work for us. Yeah, but it still needed context that Knowing Better has now provided. A lot of people have taken this quote out of context before. Also, it was pretty nice of Christopher Columbus to refer to the native population as ingenious. Now, granted, it doesn't at all make up for what he did to them after he said that, but you also need to look at things from the Christian perspective. There is no higher moral good than saving someone's eternal soul. Now granted, he probably used that line of thinking to justify all the horrible things he did to them, but you still should take the Christian perspective into account. Oh my god, finally I have recorded up to what I had before, and I know I'm not even halfway done with covering Armored Skeptic's video, but his points do get better from here on out. So I'm going to be skipping a lot of Armored Skeptic's points, either because I agree with them, or I don't know enough about the subject matter to debunk them. That's what the natives were. Peasants, not slaves. Columbus wanted to subjugate them, which means turn them into subjects of the crown, not enslave them. They were forced to work against their will, but nobody owned them. <laughs> what am I listening to? Servants under the feudal system is worse than slaves. Because the very fact that a slave is considered property means that a slave has some level of rights and protection. But a land servant under the feudal system has none. They're considered a part of the property, meaning the property owner can hurt them and kill them and work them to death, and he receives no punishment. It's kind of ironic for a person wearing a knight's helmet to get this so wrong. This was absolutely not the case. In fact, he has them flipped. While the details of serfdom vary widely between time and place, serfs tended to have a lot more rights than slaves throughout history, especially when compared to slaves of the transatlantic slave trade, which is a type of slavery that is relevant to what he is talking about. That's right, the protector of the natives, as he would later be called, advocated for the transatlantic slave trade, which then started under Nicholas de Havando, not Columbus. Yeah, uh, two reasons for that. One, because African slaves already had built up immunities to most European diseases, so they'd die less often. Okay, I guess those reasons are why it happened, but again, this doesn't debunk anything Knowing Better said. He said that the transatlantic slave trade was started by someone who was not Christopher Columbus, and you just gave reasons as to why that happened. And let's just say that Knowing Better brought up these points in his own video, Armored Skeptic would just be like, oh my god, he thinks that the Africans deserve to be slaves because they had immunity to diseases. And two, the transatlantic slave trade became an industry. He was lost lobbying to begin an industry, meaning people would make money off of the selling and trading of slaves. He's a 
real freaking hero. Why did you call him a real hero so sarcastically? Your point is exactly the same point that Knowing Better had. What is going on? Do you actually believe that Knowing Better likes this guy when he said the protector of the natives, as he would later on be called, was the one who advocated for the transatlantic slave trade? I think the key point that Knowing Better is trying to make here... The protector of the natives, as he would later be called, advocated for the transatlantic slave trade, which then started under Nicholas de Avando, not Columbus. He's trying to say that Columbus was not the one that began the transatlantic slave trade, even though people record him as being the first. And though technically Columbus didn't start it, Columbus was the first person in human history to cram hundreds of people into the belly of a ship and send it across the Atlantic, proving that mass slave trade was possible across the Atlantic. And Columbus did this not knowing if any of the slaves would survive the trip. So bringing this up doesn't make Columbus seem any less evil. Okay, Armored Skeptic, yet again you have debunked nothing Knowing Better just said. NOTHING! ABSOLUTELY NOTHING! All you did was agree with him but make it sound like a disagreement. He said that Christopher Columbus wasn't the one who created the transatlantic slave trade. And you just replied with, Oh yeah, well, that may be true, but uh, he still proved it was possible. And also, it does make Christopher Columbus seem less evil because he wasn't the one who created the transatlantic slave trade. Like, if a lot of people believe that Robert E. Lee ate babies and then later someone proved that he didn't eat babies, it would make him seem less evil. He would still be a pretty bad guy, but he wouldn't have been as bad as someone who eats babies. If anything, it solidifies him as one of the most evil human beings in history. Wait, what? Not creating the transatlantic slave trade solidifies you as one of the most evil men in all of history? What? Columbus was removed as governor of Hispaniola in 1500 and put in jail. Not because of his brutal treatment of the natives, but because of his mismanagement of the colony, which meant that he wasn't extracting enough gold, and because of complaints from the Spanish colonists. Cut off people's noses and hands unless they give you silver, right? He was doing that to the Spanish. I'm sure he also did that to the natives, but the king and queen didn't really care about the natives at this point. But it was while he was arrested that he wrote an important letter. Letter. Girls as young as nine years old were sold into sexual slavery. My customers wanted New World sex slaves, and I heard them. Actual Christopher Columbus quote. That actual Christopher Columbus quote comes from that important letter I just mentioned, where he complains about the robbing and sexual slavery of natives. Which is why he cut off colonists' hands and noses. Columbus did not get in trouble for maiming Spanish colonists. That's a lie. He was getting in trouble because the entire colony got out of hand. Because it was being ruled by a mindless tyrant. But why don't you go ahead and read that letter for a second? And that the violence of the calumny of turbulent persons has injured me more than my services have profited me, which is a bad example for the present and the future. Am I saying that Columbus was a good person? No. But am I saying that he was against the very thing that people say he was for? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, don't you understand the context of this letter? He's complaining that his reputation has been ruined by the barbaric acts committed by the colonists. He's throwing them under the bus, saying that he had no control over them and their actions made him look bad. But he was the one in charge of them, meaning it was up to him to stop them from doing those things. Now I'll fully admit that I don't know a lot about this myself, but it would be helpful if Armored Skeptic, you know, put some evidence on screen. But at the end of the day, even if Armored Skeptic is right, Knowing Better is still debunking the guy he's covering, so I don't know why he has a problem with this. And you saying that Christopher Columbus should have done something about it? Um, I think cutting off people's hands and noses is doing something about it. The guy read an actual quote from Christopher Columbus about how girls were sex trafficked. Knowing Better points out the context that Christopher Columbus was against that. An armored skeptic just comes in and says, yeah, but he still did a lot of bad stuff. Columbus was disgusting. Disgusting. They're quoting his complaint about something happening and saying he was doing it. That's 
Talk about taking something out of context. The problem here is that he didn't write this letter to the king and queen before his arrest. He wrote these correspondence after he was already put in custody. He wasn't complaining about something he was observing at the time. He wasn't bringing an issue to light. He was complaining about it after he already got caught. Yeah, he got caught for cutting off the hands and noses of his own men who were sodomizing children. But of course, Armored Skeptic would defend a guy who claims someone meant something when they literally said the opposite because that's what he's been doing to knowing better throughout this entire video. It's made even worse by Black Legend, which is a propaganda campaign by English historians to make the Spanish look much worse than they really were. Uh, buddy. It says alleged. See right there on the screen where it says alleged? Yeah, that means it's not real. What? No, that's not what alleged means. It means it could be true. How do you not know what alleged means? When people say from Columbus's own journals, what they really mean is from one specific 1892 English translation of the 1530 transcripts of Columbus's journals, originally written 40 years earlier. I hate to draw this comparison, but it's kind of like directly quoting Jesus. God, please don't bring Jesus into this. He didn't speak English. What you're actually reading is a centuries-old translation of a third-person account of what he said, written hundreds of years afterwards. Yeah, written hundreds of years later by people who never met him. Las Casas was Columbus's biggest fanboy and was the first person to follow directly in his footsteps. It's not at all a fair comparison. And the people transcribing Jesus' work weren't trying to make him look better. Bad. This is just a sloppy analogy. Now you're probably wondering what Armored Skeptic is wrong about in this clip. Well, he's actually not wrong. He's absolutely right here. I just wanted to show this clip to show you guys that his video isn't entirely bad. Columbus's regime was so senselessly brutal that by 1542, the Taino population on the island had fallen to 200. <clears throat> As we've already established, Columbus's regime only lasted until 1500. Adam is attributing an entire 50 year span to one person, 42 of which weren't even under Columbus. It would be fair to try to separate Columbus's actions with all the brutality that happened after him if you could demonstrate that what happened after Columbus left was actually worse than what Columbus did. However, after Columbus left, the conditions for Aboriginal slaves actually improved. If anything, individual acts of brutality against natives declined after Columbus was replaced. It's fair to say that it was his regime that did it because he's the one that began the precedence for the treatment of aboriginal slaves. He's the one that got the ball rolling on the genocide. Okay, I'm not saying that Armored Skeptic is wrong here, but it's entirely possible that less natives were slaughtered after Abraham Lincoln left because, well, there were just less natives to slaughter. Like, you can't exactly kill 60% of the population twice in a row. Oh my god, I swear I meant to say Christopher Columbus. I just get their names mixed up sometimes. No, I do not think they're remotely comparable. I just learned about both of them at the same time, so I get their names mixed up because of that. He's the one that began the system of removing natives from their homes and cultures and forcing them to work in inhumane conditions. Before Columbus was there, no natives were slaves and no natives were brutalized. After Columbus arrived, that happened constantly. So who else do you blame for that? Well, if it wasn't Christopher Columbus, it would have been any European who discovered America. I'm not saying they would have been as brutal as him, but any European would have slaughtered those people. I'm not saying this makes Christopher Columbus less bad or anything. I'm just saying that I don't like the way Armored Skeptic worded this. Before Christopher Columbus arrived, everything was fine. He really should have said before the Europeans arrived. Well, how many people did Columbus and his men kill, and does that count as genocide? If we take that 250,000 number and subtract the 90% mortality rate from disease, the answer is that it doesn't matter. That's not what genocide means. In 2012, George Zimmerman shot and killed Trayvon Martin. That fact is beyond dispute, but he was found innocent. How is that possible? Because he was tried for murder, not manslaughter. Murder requires an intent to kill. 
Zimmerman didn't leave his house that morning saying, I'm gonna kill a black kid today. Uh, did you seriously just put a justification for the Trayvon Martin murder in the middle of this video? Did you seriously just defend George Zimmerman in the middle of this fucking video? Like, oh my god, I have to change gears for a second. Okay, Trayvon Martin was murdered. That was murder. But George Zimmerman got away with it, not because it was manslaughter, not because they charged him with the wrong thing. He got off on a technicality because of the stupid stand your ground law. Like, read the freaking articles on it, for Christ's sake. Okay, I don't 100% disagree with Armored Skeptic here, but the thing is, it wasn't murder. Murder is a legal term. A lot of right-wingers hate it when I say that George Floyd was murdered. I understand why those people disagree, but the thing is, he was murdered because the law said he was. Take abortion, for example. It's only murder if the law says it is. When we look at what happened with Columbus and his men, there's no denying that mass killings took place. I am not trying to deny, excuse, or minimize what happened. What the f are you talking about? That's the entire point of this video, is you're minimizing the severity of Columbus's acts. Like, are we watching the same thing? I'm losing my f mind. I believe you are, Armored Skeptic, because he's not minimizing anything. He's just presenting the facts of what actually happened and debunking exaggerations of what happened. When trying to label the crime as genocide, we have to look at the intent. Genocide, as defined by the UN, is an act committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group. Columbus's intent was not to wipe them out. All of them. And now you're using a Star Wars meme to justify native genocide. Oh my god, you are such a boomer. And also, he's not justifying anything. Where did you get that from? He's playing that clip to show that's not what Christopher Columbus is saying, and you somehow translate that into justification for genocide? I'm not convinced that you understand the severity of this subject matter. Because he plays played a Star Wars clip. Bro, get your helmet out of your ass. If it weren't for Columbus, they would still have a connection to their original culture. They would not have been genocided, and they would be a sovereign people. No, if it wasn't for Christopher Columbus, it would have been some other European. Maybe they would have been better, maybe they would have been worse, but the words you're looking for is if the Europeans never showed up. Wouldn't have endured any of the atrocities that happened to them since white people got here. Yes, Armored Skeptic, you are right right about that. See, I knew you could do it. But I don't see how this debunks anything Knowing Better has said. Many people, Columbus deserves none of the credit for discovering America, but all of the blame for what happened to it. If we can pin 400 years of awful history onto one guy, it shifts all of the guilt for what happened to the Native Americans away from the rest of us. Well, the rest of you, because my relatives didn't come over until after the close of the Indian Wars, so... Not me. And at the end of this shit show, with that line, he demonstrates his motivation for making this video. He just wants to pretend that because his family arrived after the worst of the atrocities, that he doesn't bear any guilt. He wants to spread the blame away, not only from Columbus, but from himself. Uh, okay, first of all, I'm pretty sure he was making a joke. And second, he wasn't trying to remove the guilt away from Columbus. He was just trying to make it clear that not not all the guilt should be put on him, but on all of us for benefiting from the Native Americans' land. He literally said the opposite of what you thought he meant. Bravo. He doesn't want to take ownership for the guilt that he feels for benefiting from a system that rests on the backs of the natives from which we stole this land. Okay, first of all, we conquered it, we didn't steal it, and second, he's literally doing the opposite. He's saying don't put all the blame on Christopher Columbus, but on yourself as well. He doesn't want to admit that he's benefiting from a system that resulted from genocide. Well, if we ignore the fact that he pretty much said the opposite, then yes. He doesn't want to admit that the United States shouldn't exist and that this land should belong to the Aboriginal peoples of the Americas. Well, it's probably because he doesn't believe in that because that's just dumb. Land back is the pinnacle of virtue signaling. I can't even begin to think of the logistics of how we would deconstruct the United States, give it back to the natives, and have every white, black, and Asian person person move somewhere else. Even if we could pull that off, there's not enough natives to run the economy, and China would now be the strongest country in the world, and that's just a world I don't want to live in. 
I need my porn. Wants to wipe his hands clean of all the blood and just pretend that this is just the way it should be. Because we're advanced on the tech tree and it was an inevitability that they would get conquered and subjugated for being a less developed people. Um, yeah, it was an inevitability. This is your mind on indoctrination. This is what cognitive disconnect looks like. This is your mind on the American education system. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about your video, except for replace American education system with Canadian education system. You're from a primitive country who hasn't even beat Tetris yet. That was America's second victory over the Russians. None of this should have happened. I guess you're right, but it doesn't debunk anything knowing better has said. None of this had to happen. I guess you're right, but it doesn't debunk anything knowing better has said. But it did because the Europeans were arrogant. For the love of God, debunk something he said. Also, I don't think arrogance is the word you're looking for. Arrogant would be going up against the nation stronger than you. They went up against something much weaker than them. I think the word you're looking for is cruel, not arrogant. Because white people believed that they deserve this land and that aboriginals are not real human beings. Vlad the Impaler was an incredibly cruel and terrible man. Now, if you're wondering why I just brought him up, well, it's because it has just as much to do with Armored Skeptic's video as this point has to do with Knowing Better's video. Like, Armored Skeptic is just trying to make himself look good by saying that bad people are bad. Like, do you want a cookie or something? Everything that Knowing Better said in this video not only reinforced that narrative, but proved that he himself believes it. It's too bad that literally all your evidence shows the opposite. Well, at least some of it. I'm pretty sure he does not believe that Native Americans are less than human, but I'm pretty sure he does believe that because their technology wasn't as good that the Europeans would have eventually taken them over, which is um common sense. This land belongs to the aboriginals. Well, it did belong to them until it didn't. And if China, along with the European Union, decided to invade the United States, the land would no longer belong to America. I know this might fly over your head because you're Canadian and you guys literally just asked for your land, but people in the USA had to fight and pay for the land they now have. You have to learn to accept that terrible things happen to the natives and that we're currently benefiting from a system that only exists because we took everything away from them. I agree, Armored Skeptic, and I do accept that. But unfortunately, for the last time, this debunks none of what Knowing Better has said. And that was Armored Skeptic's video. I gotta be honest here, I did not expect my response to come out to being over an hour long, but I guess that just shows how terrible his video is. And there are even more points I can make against his video, but I think my response to him is already long enough. Now, Armored Skeptic, if you're watching this, your video on Knowing Better was a bad video and you really should take it down. I'm pretty sure if Knowing Better saw my content, he would think I'm an evil alt writer. but I can tell that your video on him was nothing but slander. You were trying to make him seem like such a cartoonishly racist guy for the dumbest of reasons. I still like your content and I'll stay subscribed, but this was a disgusting video. I do not want to assume that you were lying, but now that I've made you aware of your mistakes, you really should take accountability for them. Armored Skeptic, I hate to break it to you, but you're not as smart as you think you are. You made a career going after the lowest hanging fruits possible, like Flat Earthers and, ugh, Jordan from Spirit Science. But someone like Knowing Better is, um, clearly out of your league. If you would like to have a friendly discussion with me about your video, I'm all for it. I can even give you tips on how to get back in the YouTube algorithm. I want to make it clear that I'm not making this video to make you seem like a bad person. I just think you made a bad video and that's it. Everyone makes mistakes and I hope you take accountability and try to fix them. Anyways, for everybody who made it to this point in the video, I'm gonna get to work on even more content for this channel in the near future. <sighs> it's good to be back. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my video on Gary Stu's and Isekai animes. I'll link it down below. Please go check it out. Woo!